timing. A lot of people around the sixth year, I've had people say, when you get in that sixth year, think about leaving. A lot of shows start to dip then, and your show is actually climbing in the ratings. Our show's been, we've been very fortunate. Uh, our show's only like a four years old. Uh, we've, uh, we took off right around the beginning of the third year. Mm -hmm. So we've been on the air six years, but actually it's only for like four years. Has it changed a lot since the beginning? Oh, yeah, dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. Used to be a, a car chase show, uh, fights every act, uh, gunfights, car chases. Uh, and now it's, uh, I think it's settled in to be a pretty darn good uh, dramatic show. It tells me we tell real good stories, and uh, we don't uh, indulge ourselves in, uh, with the individual lives of the characters, myself, Charlie, Hallahan, and Stephanie. Yeah. You're actually also the executive producer now, and you weren't in the right. beginning. Right. As an actor and a former football player, how many knew that this, well, you're from L.A., I'm sure some of you are. But, uh, those of you who don't know, this gentleman was a very, very mean man on the gridiron for the Los Angeles Rams. Actually, it's interesting because, yeah, be, because you're on today, I, I thought about that this weekend because the Giants and the Rams were playing, right. and it was weird. I was wondering who you rooted for. Well, I wanted, uh, I wanted L.A. to win. Yeah. Uh, right. I wanted L.A. to win. <laughs> I thought they were the better team, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't be surprising to me if the Giants had won. Yeah. yeah. It was a tight game. It, it's funny. I played in L.A. and New York, and I come out here, all I see is L.A. and New York people. I don't see anybody in between. Yeah. Yeah, I went to a Rangers-Kings game, and that's the way it was. It was like just a bunch of people from L.A. and New York. Are you a, a football fan, baseball fan? Are you a basketball fan? I'm a big basketball and basketball. football fan. Yeah. Absolutely. Are you from so. Detroit? No, I'm from Cleveland, but I lived in Detroit for a year. Yeah. That's for being from Cleveland and living in Detroit for a year. <laughs> <laughs> How did you make the transition from football to acting? Um, a lot of people try. Yeah, I know. Well, look, uh, it's like anything else. If... Uh, it, it, Football is something you can do, uh, uh, fortunately, for only a short period of time. And uh, I did it, and uh, halfway through the 13 years I played, I decided I better think about getting out. So uh, yeah. halfway through my career, I started thinking about what I wanted to do. And, uh, so I was actually working at this while I was still playing football. Yeah. So working, working under Georgia, I can't imagine how you survived. I, I met her. The lady who only think of her. Coldfish. <laughs> Goldfish. I, I wouldn't want to play for <laughs> how, how did how did well, you actually I spent most of my years playing for Carol Rosenblum mm -hmm. and then uh, 79 80 and part of 81 for Georgia when she took over the team yeah so you know she really wasn't my boss you know? right she can uh, she can shop <laughs> <laughs> oh guys you know your football personality and this just Maybe my observation, but it, it seemed a lot like the Hunter character. You know, really? very unorthodox, yeah. uh, did things his own way. Well, to a degree. I mean, there's, there's structure to both. But, I mean, the great thing about playing uh, football was on Sunday, the coaches sit on the sidelines and you got to play. And, and uh, it was, uh, it's like what you do out here. I mean, you have a format to your show, but when you come out here, you get a do what you want to do, basically, within that format. And so that, and that's great about, uh, it's one thing that's great about sports is you be, you're able to do that. Yeah. And uh, doing the shows, or doing Hunters is, is about the same thing. You know, we get to, uh, we get to uh, create, we get to uh, uh, perform and do the shows within that format. That's, it's very, uh, it's very uh, satisfying. Yeah, you uh, actually are bigger than your average talk show host but probably as a football player, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you could beat me and stage act to death, but as a football player, you're not that big. And I read someplace no. you used to put weights under your arms or something like that. <laughs> I played uh, uh, professional football, not one game did I play over 227 pounds. So everybody else is like 250, 270, 280, 300. Damn. And then, uh, so uh, it wasn't a problem for me, but it was a problem for the, the coaching staff and. Uh, so to make them feel better, I put two, two and a half pound weights, the small ones, underneath my armpits when I weigh in every Friday. So, you know, they said, hey, he's, he's bulking up. Uh, so, you know, so I just say, yeah, fine, great. And let them, let them uh, uh, deal with that, and then I just push on and play. That's all I worry about is playing. Yeah. Um, Sandy, going to commercial, let me see my man at the office doing his thing. <laughs>
you about a great way to meet new people. It's called the Love Line. When people meet you, do they ever have misconceptions about maybe what you're going to be like? I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I think you probably have uh, any public figure, you probably have that uh, feeling about them. I don't know. I don't know if they have them about me or not. Yeah. You have to answer that question. Um, well, upon researching to uh, talk to you, you know, I was surprised that you had made the transition so totally. I mean, to become the executive producer and the fact that you have really done your homework as far as becoming an actor. A lot of people just do it because they want a crowd and they miss their old crowd. And uh, this is the next best thing, but they don't really get into it. Yeah. Well, if it's your profession, you better do something about it. I mean, see, when I played football, I played uh, 13 years. I played uh, four years in college, four years in high school. So most of my life, up to 35 years of age, I was playing football in my life. Mm -hmm. So when I left there in 81, I left the Rams, uh, they came and said, not only are you fired, mm -hmm. but you don't have a career anymore. See? Yeah. So if a guy came over here and said, Arsenio, the show's over with, and not only is the show over with, you can't do this anymore anyway. Yeah. So that's where that's I, that's where I was. See? So now I had to go back. And I kind of understood that was going to happen after a while. You know, I mean, you can't play professional football more than maybe 15 minutes and realize that it could be a short career. Yeah. So uh, I prepared for that. And uh, uh, like I say, seven years into the league, I decided I wanted to act and do that. So I followed that. And... Uh, I, I feel good about where I am because uh, I worked hard to, to get here, and uh, it's it's great to be paid to do something you like, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It, it becomes less than the job. It's, right. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it becomes your life. You, know, yeah. you feel as though that, uh, that when you get up, that you have an effect on people. And I never realized how many people watched our show until I went to a NAPTI convention in Houston, mm -hmm. Texas, about two years ago. You know where that's the syndicators. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, uh, the people love the show. They love Stephanie and myself. And uh, you, you you go to work and, and you probably understand this as well as I do is you come here and you're in this room with all these people doing this television show and you don't really feel the impact that you have across the country yeah you don't because I'm here all somebody day. Some, a, a lady will come in and tell you oh, gee we did real well in all the five major cities and you're great in syndication and you're beating uh, cars and all these people mm -hmm. at the same time you, you, that's great but you don't feel that you don't see that so you get out amongst people and you see that and they say all people want to do is say hi how you doing and we like your show and uh, and it's 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 very rewarding it's different than when i played football it's uh, you say hey kick the brains in this weekend uh, <laughs> you know the typical stuff which is it which is very which is very understandable but uh here i feel as though i'm in more control of my life as well as my work how close is it people call it a game a football game mm -hmm. how close is it to war though i heard dickerson talking one night at his house huh? <laughs> you know dickerson <laughs> Yeah, I... <laughs> he has the dogs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those mean dogs. Okay. <laughs> but Go ahead, you were saying. You, you know, you've been to his house? No. You were bit by his dog no, at a mall. The reason I don't go to those houses is because of the dogs. <laughs> yeah, those Go dogs. Ahead. But he always puts them out back. Yeah, I understand. But he talks about things that go on that we at home don't know about. And when he discussed it, it sounded more like war than a game. Well, I mean, he's got the ball. You know, I mean, if you got the ball, it's war. To me, yeah. it's fun. I, <laughs> I chase the guy with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not war to me. He's complaining. I'm smiling. Yeah. <laughs> How much do you miss it? Oh, I miss the cortisone shots and uh, the bad bus trips and losing pl uh, championship games in the snow, the farting in the huddle. Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> Could we stop on the farting in the huddle for a minute? <laughs> well, that's all a part of life. I mean, you know, when you shake it down, I mean, it's all new to everybody when you start playing. But then, then it's like being married. After a while, you know, the newness wears off, and then you kind of like you're stuck with the realities of being with a lot of individuals over a long period of time. Yeah. Right? They're sweaty, they're dirty, they have their own little way about them, and uh, you have to live with them regardless of if you want to or not. So... <laughs> The one thing is I, I was, I've been out of the league nine years, and uh, 
when you sit back and watch a football game like I watched the Ram Giant game this weekend, and you ask yourself, gee, I, you know, I sometimes I forget what it was like to play at times. And then I realize I see him in the huddle, he goes, yeah, I know what that was about. Yeah. You know, and Jack Reynolds farting or, <laughs> or, or, or somebody, or somebody uh, 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 picking their nose or, uh, 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 you know, little, little nuances that, that, that you, you don't take for granted. So the television camera never sees those things, certainly. So sometimes when the quarterback is doing this, he's not asking the audience to be quiet. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Oh, man. When you hit a guy and you end up in one of those piles... He might fart. Oh. <laughs> he, he might do that. I was trying to get away from farting, but okay. <laughs> you, you can't get away you from can't it sometimes. Get away. Yeah, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> what? I'm just thinking about the president of Paramount is sitting in his office over there with a monitor saying, <gasps> ah! uh, "What's next for you?" Well, we're we're certainly doing a show. Uh, we're uh, about 15 weeks into our 22-week schedule, and uh, in March, I guess, is our last week of work for this year. And uh, you know, we push on and do the show. Uh, it's great working with Stephanie every day, and uh, uh, being able to have the privilege to work with good people. And, and uh, um, I played on great football teams with great people, and that's the things I miss. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, the games, you know, you win or lose. That's why they have. That's why they have another week. That's why they have another Super Bowl. That's why they play. That's why you'll come on tomorrow and do the show again. Yeah. You know? But the people you're involved with that, uh, that make a difference, certainly to me, that's what, that's what makes the memories uh, uh, so valuable for myself. But I'll just push on. We'll, we'll do the show, uh, you know, as far. I guess Brandon, you know, he, he wants to do the show as long yeah. as we want to do it. Are you so, still associated with football anyway? Um, is there any connection to you and football? I, uh, the Giants played out here uh, in Anaheim a couple of months ago. I went down to the field and saw some of the guys. There's only like about five or six guys uh, as players still. There. I saw Dr. Curlin and all the other uh, coaches, and I saw the doctors, and some of the people worked at the stadium. But I, uh, you know, it's funny. It's like I say, sometimes it's like I never played because it's it's only a memory sometimes, you know. Well, what you're doing now is working out yeah, real good. We're enjoying it. Yeah, thank you. Hunter, Fred Dreyer, we'll be back.